G'day everyone, I just finished up a meetup with uh, freecodecamp.com here at Hubid Bali and um, it inspired me to do this video on how I learnt to code, which is a question I've been getting uh, quite a bit, so let's get into it. So let's answer a few quick questions up front. Did I have to go to school? Did I have to pay money to learn this? The answer to both of those is no. The reality of the situation is there is numerous free tools online for you to learn how to code. Even today at the meetup, freecodecamp.com is a free platform to learn how to code and it's open source so people contribute to it all the time and it's huge. You can learn how to code off it in a few months and maybe land a job in a few months. So my story, those of you who have met me or seen some of my videos from before, is that I was studying a degree in accounting and I did not want to be an accountant. So what I did was I realized I wanted to be in startups, so I started looking into code. And then uh, once I discovered the digital nomad movement, that was the push for me to finally uh, study how to do coding. There's so many benefits to knowing how to code. Um, the job prospects are good. Uh, there's travel opportunities, remote work opportunities, um, so much opportunity. Um, and just the opportunity to create is the thing that really motivates me. I started learning code seriously in March of 2015. How I got started was I set up an account on a website called lynda.com. That's L-Y-N-D-A.com. And this website, you can basically learn anything. It's a really famous website. LinkedIn just acquired it for more than a billion dollars, so you know <laughs> it's worth it. And basically, I started with uh, PHP and Ruby on Rails. and Linda provides a really great base. For example, Ruby on Rails, they, they provided 12 hours of video content and it's premium content. There's other free services like Code Academy, which is good, Code School, which you have to pay for, but it's still cheap, freecodecamp.com, the list goes on. Quite literally, there are a heap. There's probably hundreds, if not thousands, of free coding uh, courses out there. So you may be thinking, oh, lynda.com, that's a paid service. Well, no, I didn't pay for it. Uh, the key is, is that Lynda subscriptions are often bought by institutions such as your university or state library. So while I was studying uh, at QUT in Brisbane, I had access to a free account on lynda.com. Even if you don't go to university, you still have an opportunity to check with your state library. In uh, Queensland, the state library offers you free lynda.com memberships. They're not that expensive either way if you have to pay for it at the end of the day. So basically what I did was I started learning, I started networking, I started telling people that I was learning. So it's important to go out there and spread the message that you are learning code and this is what you want to do. Part of the reason why I got a job so quickly um, was that I was networking and also the job market for web developers is really good at the moment. Last time I checked, in the US, software engineers are the number one in-demand job, so there's plenty of people that have done intensive courses and gone straight into jobs, which is just unheard of in something uh, that you would go to university for, like um, accounting. So basically, I started with lynda.com, and then after that, you just basically Google everything else. <laughs> There's a saying that goes around that um, programmers are just expert Googlers because uh, in IT, if you know how to describe your problem and you can type that into Google, somebody's probably already had that problem and you can get the answer really, really quick. Learning how to code is probably one of the easiest things to learn in terms of resources. For instance, if I wanted to be a doctor, it'd be really hard to learn how to be a doctor without going to university. Whereas to be a developer, there are numerous free tools out there, such as Linda, such as Code Academy, such as Code School. But Code School, you have to pay, but even still, it's very affordable. So to somebody starting out, what would I suggest? Um, Linda's a great place to start, but really anywhere is a great place to start. If you want to do web stuff, I would learn the front end stuff first, because that never changes. It's getting a bit technical here, but when you make a request to the server, it spits out, 
HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That never changes. So if you can learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, um, you'll be well on your way to being at least a front-end developer. For the back-end, it's really up to you. You can basically write in anything these days. There's Ruby on Rails, there's PHP, there's um, Node, there's Java, using JavaScript, so that's Node.js. There's too much to choose from in the back-end, but the important thing is to just go for it. Um, choose one thing that you like, maybe try a few different ones and see how you go. When I was starting out, I learned PHP first because it's easy to get started with PHP. I started learning Ruby on Rails because I saw there was a big community for that in my hometown of Brisbane. But I ended up going back into PHP for my most recent contract and I enjoy the simplicity of PHP and a lot of the frameworks aren't as opinionated as um, Ruby on Rails, which is a term you'll learn as you go through your um, learning to code journey. For those of you who are interested in remote work, web development and software development in general is probably the number one job to get remote work. I just finished up two weeks of full-time work here at Hubert, um, working remotely for the same company I work for in Brisbane, and it's seamless. Uh, apart from being able to turn your head to the side and ask um, your colleague a question, I can just get on chat. Um, there's Skype, there's also um, Team Viewer or other apps which allow you to interact with the other person's computer um, so you can control the other person's computer. The tools are there for developers so if you're looking at um, wanting to be a remote worker, web development is definitely a career you should be looking at. So they're saying that everyone can learn how to code and I, I believe that but at the end of the day only learn how to code if you want to. There's other ways you can combine remote work or make your work remote um, and almost every industry um, and every job can go remote if it doesn't require manual labor or um, physically being in one space. It's, it, if, if you use a computer for your job, um, then it has the opportunity to grow remote. So um, Denise, my girlfriend, she works in social media and marketing. Many of the people I've met here work in marketing, consulting, web design, um, many different things like that. So yeah, if you really want to learn to code, I definitely suggest you do it. My top suggestions are to get on those free um, websites where you can learn how to code and and just get involved in the local community. The great thing about um, software and programming languages is strong communities exist for them. So you can just talk to people there and um, that's how I got started um, and got my first job in web development. So if you have any other questions, just comment on this post or send me an email or um, send a message on the Chris the Freelancer um, Facebook page and um, yeah. Um, I look forward to seeing you on the next uh, video.